began our remote teaching with very little lead in time or preparation for developing a full understanding of the online learning environment. Feedback from families and students from our Term 2 surveys was very positive. They appreciated the timetable structure and, our, and the teachers' efforts to connect and instruct students through a range of technologies. They liked appropriate amounts of work and they liked it when teachers allowed them to join back into sessions. Many students commented on clear instructions and intentions at the beginning of the lesson as being very helpful. They commented on their ability to finish work and they enjoyed a variety of tasks in each lesson. Many issues that students struggled with in class extend to online learning and this was apparent in their comments. It was clear that students in prac subjects like art and design as well as the sciences were missing the support and resources they were used to with, with the practical component. Some students said that they found it hard to hear or understand when lots of students were asking questions. So I'm guessing that they were talking about um, Zoom sessions and the need to mute students who weren't speaking. Students also used words or phrases like too much, overwhelmed and can't finish. So um, the volume of work seemed to be problematic for some of our students. Students noted that with some classes there was too much Zoom, with other classes there was not enough Zoom, and when there was no Zoom, students also commented. So in response to these challenges and the very short leading time to our remote learning plan, this tutorial aims to help teachers think about their planning for learning. It draws on an evidence base known as learning design and um, Diana Lorillard proposed a conversational framework to represent the learning cycle and her framework is based on current research on student learning and so this tutorial borrows from her framework. It also borrows from work by UCL's Clive Young and Natasha Perovich who use the framework to design workshops for university educators and so I've adapted some of the material that they've made available on their website. We know that a rich mix of teaching learning activities provides a range of opportunities for students to engage with content in our subject. This engagement supports students in their construction of knowledge, skills and understanding of our subject content. You remember that we can't tell students knowledge, we can't give them knowledge, we can't give them understanding. All we can do is create opportunities for them to build their own conceptual meaning about our content. So Lorillard groups these activities into six learning types. Their acquisition, investigation, discussion, practice, collaboration and production. And I'm going to let her voice um, take you through what each of those six mean. Everyone who teaches wants their students to have a good experience of learning because that's what would drive their future learning. In this video, we look at what it takes to learn in the context of formal education, and then we can think about how to make that happen. The conversational framework is intended to help teachers think about teaching and learning from the student's point of view. Basically, it's a distillation of the main educational literature on the key findings and principles about learning. Now, with that framework in mind, we can identify some recognisable learning activities which together cover all of it. If the learner is listening to the teacher, or watching a video, or demo, or reading a book, or website, that's learning through acquisition. It's very common in education. It creates the opportunity for the learner to develop concepts, but it doesn't require them to do anything. All the other types of learning activity do. If the learner is going to the teacher or the library or the internet to find out something, that's learning through inquiry. It's a different way of reading a book, more under the control of the learner. And they have to come up with a question, evaluate what comes back, search again. It's a more active learning process, enabling that conceptual process to keep developing. If the learner is asking questions of other learners or answering their questions, exchanging ideas, challenging each other's arguments, that's learning through discussion. Listening and responding, articulating and arguing, they're all opportunities for the concept to develop. 
And if the teacher sets up a learning environment with a task goal, the learner then has to generate an action, interpret the feedback, and maybe think about the relevant concept and try again to get nearer the goal. This is learning through practice. And suppose you get the students working together on a project where they have to produce a shared output, maybe a diagram or a definition or a design or report. This is learning through collaboration. It's different from discussion. Having to produce a shared output means they have to negotiate their ideas and practice until they agree. So in the process, they're challenging each other and providing peer feedback to develop the best output they can. Even more opportunities for integrating and developing concepts and practice. And finally, when students are producing something for the teacher to evaluate, that's learning through production. Again, it may be a plan, a website, a performance, a theory, an analysis, but having to produce a public presentation of what they've learned is as important as getting feedback from the teacher. Many opportunities for integrating and developing concepts and practice. Together, all six types of learning activity cover most of what you're ever likely to ask of students, and together they cover the whole conversational framework. Using the learning types, you can bring some structure to your lesson plans by thinking about the opportunities you provide for students to engage with your subject content. With, within a 60 minute period, you might have three 20 minute blocks and students learn through a different learning type within each 20 minute period. For an extended period of work, all six learning types might come into play. And now that you have this framework to help you structure your lessons, we can think about the tools that we have and overlay those uh, with the framework that we've just talked about. So unpacking the acquisition learning type a little bit further, students undertaking these types of activities can be supported with content embedded in Canvas. A virtual classroom could be used to present some information, click view, ABC iView and ABC Podcasts, SBS On Demand, TED Ed video tutorials could be created with screen capture software, PowerPoint or Zoom. So there's a, a small pile of technologies that could be used to support students learning through acquisition. Importantly, even though there are lots of supporting technologies, you or teachers would pick and choose those technologies that you feel most comfortable with and make sure that the rich mix is coming through the range of learning types rather than bombarding students with too many technologies in a single lesson. Note that within acquisition there are a mix of synchronous and asynchronous as well as online and offline learning activities and in the context of remote learning that that's an important consideration too. Learning through investigation could be supported through scaffolding and inquiry task in Canvas, click view, library catalog searches. We've got digital reference materials like online dictionaries and encyclopedias. Search engines are an obvious one. Spreadsheets can help with analysis. Virtual museums and gallery visits could also be used. Learning through discussions can be supported by virtual classrooms and breakout rooms. Discussion forums, Google Docs has a chat feature and whole class discussions could be um, could be augmented with a student response system such as Mentimeter and Poll Everywhere. For learning through practice, we've got online quizzes, simulation environments, creating online worksheets and tutoring programs, collaboration. Oh, there's a lot of uh, great technologies there like Google Docs and Slides are great examples that allow students to interact with each other and co-create products. And there are loads of multimedia tools that can support students presenting their understanding for producing. They've got laptops, smartphones and tablets for recording and editing multimedia. Even Office and Google applications can create reports and presentations. Google Sites is fantastic if you haven't checked that out. It's, it's um, a very good website creation tool and that could even open up student work to a wider audience. Lorillard went on to produce a tool called the Learning Designer to help teachers design teaching and learning activities and also it helps um, teachers to share 
their activities. So I encourage you to have a look at that. Alternatively, using a table in Microsoft Word can also just help you to think about the structure of your lessons, can help you to identify the resources that you would need. It would help you to think about the skills that you need and also the skills that your students need. So I've popped this um, Word document onto our Canvas pages and hopefully this tutorial will be of some help.